All right then gang, so for the next few videos, I'm gonna hand you over to Chris Pennington from Coding in Public. And he's gonna teach you all about how to implement a light and dark mode in your website using CSS variables. Now, Chris is a fantastic web dev tutor. He explains things really, really well. And he's got his own YouTube channel called Coding in Public with loads more free tutorials all about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and other web development topics. I'd really recommend subscribing to this channel and checking out his work. You will not be disappointed. So the link to it is gonna be down below in the description. But anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna pass you over now to Chris. Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and thanks so much to Sean for having me on his channel. I'm excited to be able to share these short little three videos on how you can set up your own custom light dark mode theme with CSS variables. Now, I'm gonna, in this video, basically show you how it works, give you the lay of the land, help you get the project up and running, and then just do one little small tweak to CSS. And in the next two videos is where we'll really get into the meat of the thing. All right, so to start with here, I've got this finished code here and you can look at this coding in public that's the name of my channel dot dev slash project slash light dark and you'll see here that it's a fully responsive site and uh, by default it's going to choose whatever your default theme is for your machine so in this mode i've got my machine in light mode if i switch it over to dark mode and refresh the page here you see we get this dark mode theme but it doesn't have to actually just play with your default settings you can customize it here and if you click this, you'll see not only does it switch themes for you, it also plays a little sound effect of a light bulb turning on and off. So this is what we're gonna work in over these three videos, and you'll see how this works. Now this, once you start pressing this button, this will become the default for the user, and it'll remember it in their local stores, so when they come back on the same machine, it'll stay in whatever theme that they chose last time. Okay, well, we've talked about kind of the basics of the site. Let me show you a few important things to, for getting started yourself. There's this GitHub link and you can access it and jump over to lesson one if you want to start and kind of code along with me. And then you can come over to the code button, click down and download the zip file if you'd like to. Of course, you can just clone the entire repo and then navigate to the branch if you'd prefer to do that. And once you've got these lesson one files, you can pull it up in any code editor like VS Code or here I've got Nova pulled up and uh, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna need to do one thing and that is in this package.json file, you'll see that I've got this thing running with something called Vite.js. The maker of Vue.js is the one who created this. It's kind of a next generation website bundler that'll minify a bunch of stuff and spin up a local dev server and all kinds of great stuff. You don't have to use it just for Vue. You could use it for React. You could use it for vanilla JavaScript like I have here. And uh, I plan to do a video at some point on my channel. So if you're interested in that, I hope to have that up soon. Uh, so you can head over there and check it out. But the first thing we'll need to do is make sure we've got all of our dev dependencies here downloaded and ready to go. So I'm just going to say npm install. This does assume that you have Node.js. If you don't, you can go to nodejs.org and just download the basic Node.js package, install it using normal installation instructions on your machine, and that's all you'll need to do. That downloaded this node modules folder, and so that means we've got everything we need to now run our dev script here. We'll run our dev script then by just saying npm run and dev. All right, and this actually spins up this local server right here, 3000, and I've got it connected over this way. So I've showed you the finished product. I've showed you how to get it up and running. Let me show you one thing about the HTML, and then we will jump into the CSS. Let's come over this way. You'll notice if you look at the, the code that I've got a bunch of inline SVGs. And I've got it that way because I have classes in here that we're gonna apply um, that are actually already applied to give us these colors. And when we change what the classes refer to, what colors they refer to, it will update the, uh, these SVGs automatically. Doing it inline like this gives us those options, not only just for adding classes, but more importantly, for adding what's called current color. I'm not seeing one right here, but basically current color will take the parent of the SVG and use that coloring to color the actual stroke or the fill or whatever you've got it set to. You have to actually have the SVGs in line for that to work properly. There are a few ways to get around that, but that's the easiest way to do that. So if you're interested, that's why I've got all the SVGs in line rather than linked out to with image tags and stuff like that. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump into the CSS. And in this video, we're just gonna do one thing to the CSS because this is primarily kind of an introduction. You'll notice here that we've got all these colors just set to HSL values. What we wanna do is to transfer those over to use CSS variables instead. Now, if you're not familiar with CSS variables, 
Essentially, they're a native way in CSS to have something written down once that's used all throughout your code. And I'm going to declare it here on the root. You can declare it anywhere, but since these colors are used throughout the site, we're going to declare it on the root, and uh, that'll be easier for us when we use it throughout our website. And the way you write a CSS variable is two dashes, and then you'll give it a name, so like text, and then you'll give it some value. You'll see I've got a class here that's supposed to point to the same thing, so I'll just come in here and change this here. Now, how do you access the CSS variable elsewhere on your site? Well, you would just come to a place like this, and you'd say var, and then in parentheses here, two dashes and the name of the variable. When I save it here, you'll see that that actually is going to be using that CSS variable now. So all we'll need to do is grab every time this is used throughout the site and update it to say this instead. So let me grab all those different options here. And that's all of them. And then I'm going to say var, and we're going to say var text. Now, obviously here, I need this to be our original HSL value so that they can all refer to it. And if I save and reload, you'll notice everything still looks just the same. So we're going to do that for each one of these, and each one of these is going to get its own color value. Now, because we're going to be changing from light to dark mode, here's what we're going to name them. We'll name it accent one, and then accent two, accent three, background one, background two, and then we'll do a shadow. Now all we need to do is identify these different colors throughout the site. So let's come in here and this first one here, this accent one, you'll see I've already got these classes connected to it. So I can just come up here and add it in right there. And then I'm gonna jump down this way and grab all of these by hitting Command D on my keyboard. That's how I did that earlier. And we're gonna change these to var uh, accent of one. And if I save this, First of all, it's not going to work because I went ahead and removed this here, but now you'll see it's that green color. And everywhere that green is used, whether it's in an SVG or text or this background, it will update for us automatically. So we're going to do that for each one of these. So I'll come down here to accent one. That's, those are already updated. Here's accent two. Let's go ahead and grab this, jump it up this way to our accent two, and we'll apply it there. Come back down here, and we're going to grab all of these accents twos and hit Command D multiple times till we get all the way through, and then say var accent two. Once again, we'll come up top here, change this back to the HSL value, that's the orange color. Now let's do the same thing for accent three. I'll jump up this way to accent three, and then we're gonna look for every other instance of this right here by hitting Command D until we get all the way back through to the very top, and then I'll change this all to say var uh, accent three. Again, obviously, this top one, I'm going to change back to the HSL value. That's our yellow color. And again, it's used all throughout the site. Now, we'll do this two more times, this background one. Let's go ahead and change it from here. So we'll just grab all these together and then say var uh, background one. And then we're going to run up top here to our background one and add that in that way. And then we'll go to background two and do the same thing. I'm going to first copy it. And then I'm going to hit Command D to all of those and say var background two. And then we'll go up top here and make sure we add that in here. And then finally, we've got our shadow. Let's come down here and find our shadow, which in this case is just on this picture. Let me go ahead and grab it here. Uh, let's see, what was the class here? Meet Image Teacher. So let's search for that. And you see this is our box shadow. Now we've only used it here, but even so, it's nice to have in case we need it some other time. So I'm going to change this to var shadow. I've copied that. So now I'll run back up top here and change that to what I just copied. All right, we don't need three semicolons, that should work just fine. Now, if I close this down here, you'll see that everything looks the exact same as it did before, but now we're set up to be able to write custom CSS variables to use the user's preference on their machine to display either light mode or dark mode, and that's what we're gonna do next time in video two. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Happy coding.